Hello everyone. We all use man lifts to do the work that we do in utility right away spaces. But there are safety factors we still need to follow. And we're gonna talk about it next. Let's go. We all know man lifts, but there's so many different types. Mobile Elevated Working Platforms, or MEWPs, bucket trucks, or a boom truck with a man basket. Basically, anything that gets you off the ground to do your job. I'm here with Cameron Swanson, Director of Health and Safety with Ontivity. Cameron, the bottom line is this, just because we're not climbing a tower, doesn't mean we can ignore safety. What do climbers need to keep in mind when they're working in a man lift? Well, first and foremost, the most important thing that we have to keep in mind is that we don't neglect training, that we make sure that we get properly trained for the piece of equipment in which we're working and we're operating. Second to that is making sure that you do your pre-check inspections, making sure that you inspect the lift and you do your job hazard analysis. We have to make sure that we look at all the other things that surround our work environment. We have pedestrian traffic, we have vehicle traffic, and we also have overhead power lines in that bit. Outside of that, the most obvious thing is look at us. We're 150 feet in the air, so the biggest thing that we have to take into consideration is the falls. So making sure that we have the appropriate fall protection, and most importantly, last but not least, is making sure we don't become complacent. That's the biggest thing that we battle on a day-to-day -day basis. You mentioned fall protection. Let's start there. Yeah. Most importantly, we're inside an MEWP. Each one of these MEWPs or these man baskets have engineered anchor points. Making sure that we tie off into an engineered anchor point is critical. It literally is the difference between life and death. God forbid something happens. So making sure that we don't tie off to the top handrail or the mid rail is imperative. Doing that is not within the manufacturer's guidelines and in it's likely that if something were to happen, you could have a catastrophic failure that could result in fatal injuries. So you mentioned not tying off to the top handrail or the middle handrail. Mm -hmm. So you would say that anybody working in a man lift needs a fall factor two fall restraint? That brings up a valid point in that you have to make sure that you utilize the appropriate gear. Sometimes you may see people that don't know any better, not even wearing a harness or a body belt. You have to make sure that you have a full body harness with a wide leg lanyard or at least a self-retracting lanyard is what I prefer. The most dangerous time when you're operating an MEWP is when you're moving it from point A to point B at a lower elevation. And these machines don't have any suspension, so you can be ejected out of a basket before you even realize what happens just by rolling over a small pothole or a speed bump in the road. That sets up for a perfect recipe for a fatal injury. If you have a question, open up the manual, read it. You never know what you'll learn. Just whatever you do, don't color outside the lines, don't make a decision because it really could cost you or a fellow colleague their life. What about electrical safety? We're often working near power lines. What do we need to keep in mind? Yeah, this one's fun, right? Because you never know the different areas in which you're gonna be working in. One of the first things you should do as part of your job hazard assessment is to identify all your overhead obstructions and more importantly, those electrical lines, right? They're a lot less forgiving than a telco line or a fiber line or something like that. There's two different things that come to mind. I refer to them as MAD charts, right? Which is minimum approach distance. Now you have a minimum approach distance chart for both a qualified and non-qualified worker. By and large, us folks that work within the telecommunications industry fall underneath the non-qualified worker, which means that we have a greater distance in which we have to maintain from the structures or from those electrical power lines. Look, stick to what you know. Don't go out once again and make decisions or assume that a line is a certain voltage. Always, 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 if you can, go with the greatest distance. I always like to coach and preach at least 20 feet if you don't know. Within the minimum approach distance, there are calculations that you can figure out exactly how much distance you need to be away from those lines. But if you need to get within that, then additional precautions need to be taken. Reach out to the, the telephone company or the power company. If you have to work within that, they can come out and they can blanket those lines or they can de-energize those lines. We can ground them out and we can work within that. Making sure that you do your due diligence and you check, once again, is imperative. That's all great information when you're working in a man lift. Yes. 
Sometimes you don't get two chances, right? And we don't want to try to find out. Cameron, what about rigging? Is it okay to bring rigging up on the man lift? You know, we have to be careful that we don't utilize this equipment outside of what it was designed for by the manufacturer. The traditional lifts in which we use the JLGs, the Genies, and things of that nature, we are not allowed to tie anything to the actual basket itself. Furthermore, any sort of rigging, you had asked about rigging, we, it's not okay for us to tie an anchor, a block to the top handrail and hoist up from that. The last thing that we have to take into consideration is that this basket has a weight limit, okay? And we can, we can utilize that weight limit to transport, let's just say, material up and down the tower, but it has to be secured. The biggest thing that we deal with, and, and we're all familiar with it, is dropped objects. So you wanna make sure that you always have a secondary on it. It's always tied off. You gotta make sure that not only do you protect the customer's equipment and the company's tools and assets, but you also keep everybody safe on the ground as well. Climbers, on the screen, you're gonna find a list of safety standards that you need to be aware of when you're operating a man lift. Refer to these for more specifics. Cameron, thanks for being here and taking the time to walk us through safety in a man lift. For all of you watching, thank you for what you do and taking safety seriously. That's all we got for now. Thanks for watching and stay safe.